today. I went to see Roger Hayes uh, in Liverpool prison. Uh, he's been wrongfully held, uh, unlawfully held, under European rights, human rights, common law rights, and even statute acts of parliament have been broken. But we, um, I appealed yesterday by, um, by the Queen's Bench Court in Liverpool, submitted a uh, corbu uh, cor habeas corpus, um, which was accepted at the Liverpool Court and then brought to here uh, to the Manchester Civil Justice Centre, which looks like a big box of Jenga. Um, and basically, um, I had to ap uh, apply to the court this morning here for the hearing to be heard. So I did that at 10 o'clock. 20 past 10, got the hearing listed for 11, went in and got railroaded really, it didn't matter what I said I think, it didn't matter what order I said it or how I said it, the judge had already pre-made his decision, I think we all realise that and I think that the fact that the cops or the police or the peace officers or the policy enforcers, whatever you want to call them, they were stood outside the court ready for us to kick off and I think that says it all really, that they'd already phoned the police because the judge had already made his decision. Hand in hand with G4S. Exactly, and, and G4S being the uh, Israeli controlled company and all that stuff. But the key thing is that the judge pointed out that Roger has not appealed or set aside any of the liability orders that have been issued by Will Council. And so, because he's not gone through that process, the, the judge is obviously looking at the orders that have been made and not looking at them like what we are that they're void and due process hasn't been followed and Roger didn't consent and they're all the legal fiction. Just completely ignored all that. As far as he's concerned, those orders are enforceable and there's several of them. Roger hasn't put any evidence forward to appeal or set them aside. So therefore, the, the committal hearing was fine even though Roger wasn't invited and it was an ex-party hearing um, and unlawful. And so the warrant was issued unlawfully and and uh, didn't follow due process but as far as the judge is concerned all that was fine and I think that really highlights the fact that if the judge had ruled on Roger's favour today and let him go like he should have done like I'm sure that any of those sat in that judge's chair would have done instantly that he's done that because he knows that council tax would fall apart because it's unenforceable and therefore nobody can be jailed for not paying council tax and obviously he didn't want to do that and let Roger go because if that gets out in the national media, then nobody's going to pay their council tax. And so I'm going to go home now and appeal and set aside my liability orders because um, I've got my own bankruptcy hearing on the 17th in Plymouth, which you're all welcome to attend. Um, <laughs> and you're all welcome to stay in my house because I've got repossession order for that, but that's another story. Um, so the, the fact is that the, the judge has sided with the Crown, with the state, because he had no choice but to, because if he didn't, he would have opened the floodgates for everybody to say, well, I'm not paying. If you can't get jail for not paying council tax, I'm not going to pay. Um, and obviously, as far as the, this court is concerned, Roger can be jailed for not paying his council tax. But then, like I said, Roger needs to maybe go back and appeal against these liability orders. I think in terms of next steps, which I think is important, I'm going away on Friday tomorrow night um, to become a diplomat, which is quite crazy, but true. Um, and I hope Roger should come with me, but he can't. Um, John Hurst is going to continue the fight and maybe Ian Puddock down in London and I think we should try and appeal against this order if we can. Um, so I'm going to go up to the administration offices on floor 11 and see if I can appeal against the order before I leave. And I'm also going to see if Ian Puddock can put in the habeas corpus in the High Court in London because as far as I understand things, the High Court in London is the real and the only High Court of this land and it's the only real Queen's Bench Court. So therefore, that's got to be worth a shot. But if we don't do it, if we don't do it quickly, Roger's going to be out on the 23rd, um, which is obviously 21 days from when he's been. How is Roger? Well, I saw him yesterday. He's on a hunger strike, which I think we need to get out in the media ASAP. He's not shaved. He's not washed. Um, and he, did, he didn't have a, a towel yesterday or a pillow. So when I came out of the of the visitation, I phoned the warden. Uh, a really nice chap must be said for Steve Bean for allowing me in the, to, the, to see Roger because he didn't have to at short, short, short notice and allow Roger to write affidavits and habeas corpus and, and statements and be able to give those statements to me and me swap paperwork with Roger was a big thing yesterday which was great um, but he's, sound, he's sound, you know what I mean, he, he's, uh, he's frame of mind and all that stuff, he's in good fettle and in good form He's getting a lot of support from the other inmates because they know that he's a civilian prisoner 
and not a criminal prisoner. And I don't know if you know this, but civilian prisoners cannot appeal against the length of time they have to serve. They have to serve the full sentence. But if you're a criminal, and then you get good time off for good behaviour, and you can appeal against the length of sentencing, and it's nuts. Can I interrupt you? That's, that's fascinating, isn't it? Because if he's a, if he's a civil huh? prisoner, yeah. then aren't we back to contract again? Well, exactly. So where's and, the contract? And, and where's the contract? And as the judge pointed out, there is no contract obligation. So where's the warrant on oath? Exactly. Where's so, it signed? So if there was a contractual oath? obligation, the European Court rule in the Article 4, no, uh, Protocol 4, Article 1, nobody can be in prison for not paying a contractual debt would apply. But because there's no contract for council tax, you can be jailed. I mean, it's nuts. So it's why extortion. do we have to pay it then if there's no contract? Well, exactly, which is obviously, you know, Roger pointed out in his uh, affidavit and his sworn writ that there was no contract and that he is the human being and not the legal fiction is tied to his name. But obviously the judge isn't going to pay any attention to that. No, blatantly, obviously. But, oh, blatantly, obviously. Because and, and, uh, he sold his soul for 30 pieces of silver. There we go, you know, absolutely, I agree with or, you. Or with inflation it might be 130 <laughs> I really not. So I think the thing is the fight continues, you know, and we can't just give up. Even even if we get Roger out at 12 hours early, yeah. it would still be a success, yes. you know? Yes. So he's not full. We want to try and keep the fight up. Because we have to show them in there that we are sovereign, exactly. not them. Exactly. Yeah? And they're obviously scared of us, though. Not they them. are. They're which, so scared. Which I think we'll all agree the fact that we came out and those police officers there said everything, didn't it, really? Yeah. The decision was already made yes, before we walked in. Yeah. So we were real. And it they didn't expected matter. us to be little hooligans and kick off. <laughs> exactly. And everybody's head in. Yeah, and I felt like jumping over the bench and the rest of the judge, but. I'm going. I'm I going felt to. Like punching him well, I'm back. going to form it become a diplomat. <laughs> so when I get back next week, yeah, they can't touch me. Yeah, yeah that's what Roger should be doing. The moment he gets out, he's got to go to Forvit, and I'll appoint him as Justice Minister for Forvit. You know, and then he's a diplomat. I like it. You know, and that's what Roger should... Hayes is an innocent man, and he's locked up because we've got criminals working as judges. That's that's the problem. That's the crux of the problem. And a lot of them are linked with paedophiles. A lot of high-ranking police officers the same, that's why they won't investigate these crimes and that's why we're not getting any justice. Right, okay, my take on it, basically uh, the judges railroaded, it. they just railroaded, it. Uh, they didn't listen to the facts, they didn't listen to... Uh, I mean it was interesting, uh, there were loads of contradictions, he just skipped over whatever he wanted to skip over, he interpreted it the way that he wanted to interpret it, which I guess is what they do in there, but um, it was interesting that he said uh, there was no contractual obligation. So therefore, if it was a civil case, no, it's a, it, civil meaning it should, it should have a con this should be a contract. If it's criminal, then there should be um, a warrant signed by a judge on oath. So one way or another, there's either a contract or there's a warrant on oath. He said, the judge said, there's no contractual obligation. So therefore, he's, he, he must be writing off the fact that it's civil. So it's obviously not civil. So it must be criminal. But if it's criminal, there must have been some harm, loss, or fraud committed which is interesting uh, well there hasn't been that but even if you argued that there was then they would have to pursue that on oath so it, a judge would have had to have signed a warrant on oath um, there's no such warrant there's no such <laughs> signing and there's no contract and um, he wasn't interested in listening to that because they're criminal and that's the end of it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they, 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 they as good as pretty much kicked off, or they certainly, it was certainly a catalyst for the British Revolution.